DCP Frank Kumba, first public relations officer. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Mba. Well, incidentally, it's your birthday and it's coming right in the middle of this revolution. How are you taking that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's my birthday actually. It's not just my birthday, it's the best day of my son, and we share the same birthday. So, um, um, how am I taking it? For me, my life has been a life of service um, service to the family, service to the nation, and service to humanity. So, of course, it's not a time for partying is a time for work and um, so there'll be no celebration there'll be no partying there'll be no clubbing so there'll be no clicking of glasses uh, we're glad that we're strong and um, on our toes and um, so we we'll continue to serve this country to the best of our ability uh, it's just one of those sacrifices i won't even be able to share time with my son and i won't even be able to see him and hug him and wish him happy birthday but we take solace in the fact that there will be better days there are better days ahead mm. well while that is uh, the truth and the number of people unfortunately will not be able to celebrate their birthdays anymore because of some of the activities of some of your men, a few elements according to the vice president who are giving the police a bad name, which has brought us to the point where so many people are calling for the end SARS, that calling for you to end SARS, to end the special anti-robbery squad. And you, of course, have said repeatedly that that cannot happen. But so give us an understanding of what the implication of the IGP's call is is it to end the movement, or what exactly is it about from those 10 uh, things that you put on Twitter? Okay, thank you, Ayo. Um, I, I think, first of all, let's contextualize um, this, this organization, this police outfit called SAS. Um, uh, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, just like other tactical units of the force, uh, uh, societal response, not just police response, but um, a communal response to the challenges of crime. They are, they are kids or children of necessity. Uh, before, uh, many years ago, the, the, the Nigeria Police Force never had any outfit called the Special Anti-Robbery Squad. But if you follow the trajectory of the of the growth, or rather the trend and patterns and of crime in Nigeria, and also um, the modus operandi uh, usually deployed by these criminals, you understand that there was a time when armed robbery took grip of this country. And so Lagos, for example, became the hub of bank robbery, um, car theft or car snatching was, it was taking place every minute, every second, and the police had to respond. So the police um, authorities are then came up with the special anti-robbery squad, which became um, an elevated platform for the police to actually confront violent crimes. Um, operatives within the special anti-robbery squad receive extensive trainings, receive very uh, high trainings on how to deal with violent situations, violent crimes, kidnapping, hostage situations, bank robbery, armed robbery, and the rest of them. And after that, the, the, their intervention effectively saved this nation from total embarrassment. And you have continued to see how uh, a man officers and men of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad has continuously made intervention whenever it becomes necessary for us to do so. And so we were able to restore sanity in Lagos, we were able to restore sanity in Onitsha, we were able to restore sanity in so many other places where um, robberies was almost holding people to, robbers were almost holding people to ransom. Even recently, if you, if you take a look at the Southwest, um, recently, there was a time when kidnapping, 
uh, became the order of the day on in most states of the southwest, particularly um, Lagos or Rebini Expressway. Recall the the the, the death of uh, of uh, Funke Olakuri, the daughter of the Afeni Ferry leader. At that point in time, federal SAS operatives led by one of our finest officers, um, CP. Uh, Adeoye Fimiho, as he then was, his current is now an AIG. Um, operative of Ferrasas, led by uh, that very fine officer, were deployed to the southwest. And the rest is history. You, you, you know how we were able to run, run up all the killers of, of, the, of the daughter of the Afeni Ferry leader, and we were able to, to bring sanity to the southwest. When um, Kaduna Abuja Expressway became impassable. Kidnappings and robberies in, in that highway became intractable, and Nigerians could no longer use that road. Social, economic, and cultural activities, including farming in that road, uh, was, were, were, were halted. The Inspector General of Police deployed operatives of the Federal SAS, operatives of the IRT and STS to that road. The rest is history. All right. Today, but we, we, that we road appreciate you wanting to give us some background. Normalcy. We, we appreciate you wanting to give us some background on this matter. But uh, that 10 point uh, that you put out that we needed to know about the position of the IGP on FSARS, STS, uh, and several other squads, as it were. Looking through it, um, I see FSARS, but we know that there's also SARS in state commands under the command of the uh, commissioners of police in those areas. Does this take that into cognizance? Because we also have seen image footages of several videos of how some officials of FSARS as well, according to your command, saying that yes, they recorded some success. So this ban, how is it being carried out? Because even up to this morning, I still saw some persons on the street doing what we thought was the items that the IGB didn't want to happen. Okay, when we, when we use the word SAS, we use it mm -hmm. connotatively to cover um, every component of special anti-robbery operation whether they are special anti-robbery outfits um, domiciled at the state commands, whether they are special anti-robbery out, uh, outfits operating from the federal commands. And if you read those 10-point orders of the Inspector General of Police, if you read them holistically, and I expect that anybody who wants to look at it should look at it holistically. If you, if you read them together, you will see where we actually said very clearly and very explicitly that no police officer, whether you're from FSAS, STS, or IRT, or any police officer at all, is allowed to go to the street um, carrying out policing functions without being properly dressed. So it doesn't matter where you walk. It doesn't matter the, the, the nomenclature of your outfit. We have banned police operatives operating on the highways in Mufti. We have, we have put an, the IGP has put an end to federal SAS or state SAS or IRT or STS or any other uh, operational outfit at um, um, conducting stop and search, roadblock, or any other duty without being properly dressed, properly catered in their police uniforms, or being properly catered in their in their special gears for those who are in the tactical unit. We've also said very clearly that um, um, we, police officers are not allowed to carry out indiscriminate and unauthorized searches on, on, on phones, um, handheld devices, and other smart, uh, smart devices of, of Nigerians. Uh, the only time police officers are allowed to search phones and smart devices are when you are doing so in the line of an investigation. So if I'm investigating Coyote, for example, or I'm investigating Chamberlain, for example, and in the course of my investigation, I discover that 
there are there are reasons for me to believe that there are uh, 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 information of, of of evidential value on the phone uh, then at that point in time in the course of investigation at police stations and not for you to just um stop a young man on the road or a young woman on the road and then compel him to give you his password compel him to 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 to, to open up his own that is an invasion of the privacy of citizens and the ij has said very clearly that that is unlawful and that is unauthorized and and so uh so many other points we have given there but i, I right. have heard some critics said um this instructions have been given before but i will challenge them to produce any other igp that has given these instructions very clearly articulated these points the way um igp mar demo has done we put these things out um uh, uh, as 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 a covenant between us and the people, um, I understand clearly, I know that the police is huge, over 300,000 officers and men. Um, so what we just ask citizens are just to give us time and you will see the full implementation of this. Um, what we have said, uh, 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 what, the IGP, what the IGP has given out, are rules, are orders, they are regulations, and every police officer must work by those regulations. We you know, a lot of people wonder if, if any other IG or any other person has given similar orders in the past without carrying them to the letter, not the current Inspector General of Police. Right. Now, a lot of people wonder how much time, really. I mean, is it a week? Is it a month? And Interestingly, those protesters yesterday in Abuja were asking you that they needed to speak with the IG. They wanted the IGP to address them. But looking at the protests, I mean, in Lagos, FCT, across states of the Federation, even though the IGP had given those 10 points saying these are the things we will do, it appears as though it's not enough for the protesters who are saying that, well, it is beyond this. We want more to be done. In Lagos, for example, just yesterday, there was the incident involving uh, a lady and a policeman uh, around uh, Salvation. And there were reports that she was shot in the mouth uh, by a policeman. So that was just yesterday. And they're thinking, the IGP has given 10 points, but it appears as though not all policemen got the memo. So the question is, how hard really is it to rein your men in and say, enough is enough for this period and even beyond Let's get our acts right. Coyote, um, first of all, let me, let, me, let me acknowledge the fact that the police uh, leadership is aware of the fact that uh, there are a few of our personnel that have conducted themselves in the past in manners that are inconsistent with our code of conduct, in manners that are inconsistent with their oath of offices, in manners that are inconsistent with, their standard, with our standard operational procedures. Um, but, but, uh, but the good thing about the police is that it is one organization that is self-censoring. It is one, of, one organization that's got strong internal mechanism for dealing with for dealing with, or, or, with um, inappropriate behaviors or professional misconducts by its personnel. And we will not shy away from this core responsibility of ours in calling, uh, a, in bringing our personnel to book when they err or when they do things that are wrong. And we have never shied away from doing that. We are one of those few organizations out there that will publicly name and shame our own. We are one of those few organizations out there that will arrest our own, uh, uh, investigate them, and publicly prosecute them. Uh, I, I will tell you, if, you, if um, the NSAS, NSAS um, hashtag is a metaphor for calls to either reform the special anti-robbery squad, um, restructure them, or, or reposition them, or improve the way things are done, we are in for it and we support such call. All right, but just one moment, answers, Mr. Bass. Just one moment. Um, you, you'll step up on that. You, you will continue on in that trajectory of the reforms and all of that that people have been calling for in a bit when we return from this break. Mr. Amba, 
you said NSARS is a metaphor. The people, some people on Twitter already tweeted and said it is not a metaphor. They should be disbanded. We don't want them anymore. Could you please include that in your thoughts on what you were saying earlier? Yes, um, thank you. I, uh, I, I, I was actually making a point before that uh, break in transmission. Um, I said, if MSAS is, is, is um, the, the hashtag MSAS is seen as a metaphor uh, and, and a symbolic call for the reform of SARS, I would say clearly that the, the leadership of the MPF is, is, is in, in line and, and is ready to work with, the, with, with those who are making that call. However, if the hashtag MTAG answers, it should be seen um, and interpreted literally as a call for the total disbandment of SARS, I will tell you very clearly that it will be difficult for any responsible organization to walk that path, taking into cognizance the amount of, 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 of investment that the government has made in training uh, and setting up that, or that department, taking into cognizance the very critical roles that uh, that department is playing. As a matter of fact, we've also received a lot of calls from people, particularly in states like Yobe and Medugri, and some other parts of the north, um, Kasina, for example, and other parts of the north where SAS operatives are uh, deeply embedded in the fight against banditry, in the fight against insurgency. And, and these people have made it very, very clear that ending SAS it is, is not even an option for them because of the critical roles uh, SAS operatives are playing in those, in those areas uh, to rain down heavily on, on bandits, on, on terrorists, and other kind of violent criminals. And uh, so, and, and if you again look critically at those calling for the end to SARS, I will tell you, Ayo, a critical study, and I challenge you to do that study yourself also, you'll find out that there are different people um, who are motivated by different reasons calling for an end to SARS. The first and the most legitimate section or segment of those calling for SARS are those who are genuinely concerned about the professional misconduct being exhibited by some operatives from these, from these um, tactical squads. These set of Nigerians have genuine cases, they have genuine concerns, they are angered by those infraction on the right of Nigerians and they are demanding for total change and overhaul. They want things to be properly done. They want, SAS, they, they want the police leadership to do the right thing. We understand and we are in line with them. There is also another set of persons, another set of people who are also aiding and, and, and helping the call for end of SARS. These are people who are beneficiaries of criminal enterprise. Um, some of them probably are, are people who are receiving stolen goods, who are, or, who, who, or, who are uh, into organized crime such as arm, arm, arm smuggling, illicit arms movement, um, um, importation of drugs, uh, and all mm. other kind of crimes okay. that um, are Mr. economically Bar, motivated. As, as we wind um, down, pardon me, as we wind down, let me just bring in this on, on two fronts as well, because similarly, there are two things play now and may likely continue, is that number one, uh, yesterday, while that protest was going on in Oregon, there was a police officer who, of course, it was, uh, didn't do the right things there, harassing certain people, manhandling certain protesters. And then we've also seen footages of some citizens who were manhandling police officers. How do we address that? Because if the people don't feel that the right steps are being taken either by police authorities or uh, the National Assembly, you may find people in difficult circumstances when they see even regular policemen on the streets. How do we address that? I, 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 think, I think, Chamberlain, this is, where, this is where media activism comes in. And that's where I'm challenging you and challenging other patriots who are in the media industry. Since 
this interview started, uh, I've seen a lot of footage sitting here and, 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 and participating in this interview. I've seen a lot of footages on NSAS and the rest of them. I've not seen any footage showing some of those heroic activities of, of SAS operatives. I've not seen any footages showing some of those areas where policemen were callously murdered. Just yesterday at Uheli, a police corporal Friday at Taga was murdered by uh, NSAS protesters. His rifle, an AK-47 rifle, was stolen containing 25 rounds of life ammunition. Police operational vehicles and other uh, operational assets were vandalized and damaged. That is not the way to go. Certainly not the way to go. I've also seen footages of Nigerians slapping police officers and these police officers um, and keeping quiet and just controlling themselves, just like lambs, sacrificial lambs being led to, this, to the slaughter slab. And, and I've not seen that. Uh, in, in the whole of this interaction with you, I've not seen any of those ones being played. But I've seen, you, I've seen continuously um, um, footages being played um, showing the other, other side of the divide. So I think we must be ready to work together as a people. We must, we must be ready to tell truth when it is necessary. I've seen some of those who are pushing for answers, who are just pseudo activists, people who are desperate for, for public validation, people who are looking um, to, 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 to be seen as, 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 as social media influencers. And okay, I will tell um, you, these are the people that post false items, fake news, um, just right. to, well, to, 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 uh, all right, Mr. Bob. Well, we, we actually did have those footages. Uh, that's where we, it was even played just before, uh, way before that question even came through. So these are some of the concerns I just, I just, that... Uh, I just saw the footages now. I, I saw, no, no, it I was, it was the actually there earlier. Now, and I want to publicly acknowledge that I saw the footages now, Chamberlain. <laughs> it was there earlier, just as we also brought in the NSAS protesters. We equally brought in the challenges and the concerns of the police. That is what we do here on Channel of TV. But thank you. It's, a, thank it's, a, you. it's something that, that I'm seeing it right now, and I appreciate that. Well, it is something that we have. We will have to keep doing, engaging all sides, such that we could have improved services and ensure that, of course, the people want to be safe, and let the police do the right thing. So. We do thank you for talking to us this morning, DCP Frank, my first public relations officer. Thank you, Chamberlain, and thank you for the Sunrise crew for having me.